Yo, what up, y'all? Hope everybody out there feeling good. And if not, get your mind right, get your thoughts together, push yourself, fight through whatever it is you got going on, and try to make sure you're having a good day on your side. On today's show, we're gonna get into something that is a topic that y'all always ask about. The money. The money, the money, the moolah, the net all, all of that. Let's get this show started, man. First off, let me put this disclaimer right there, cause y'all gonna be like, Sean said we ain't charging enough. Uh, Sean said, no, 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 Sean ain't say nothing. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I pretty much went through with my career as a photographer and a cinematographer, and then you can relate that on your side. Let's start off with the beginners and the people who just getting cameras, but they're trying to jump out there and do photo shoots. The first thing I'm going to say about that is when I started off, guys, I was shooting for quantity as far as I need to shoot a whole lot of photo shoots. I need to shoot a whole lot of clients. I need to shoot in a lot of different environments and atmospheres. I need to shoot at a lot of different times of the day. Um, I need to try to shoot as much as possible. So at that point in time, I want to say when I first started out, y'all, I might have started at like $30 for a photo shoot. Um, didn't really understand anything about uh being a photographer shooting at specific times of the day or understand lighting or understand the editing process and post i really was going to do photo shoots going home putting them on cds and dvds and going about my business after that and that's how i delivered them to the clients at that point in time so the amount of photos i was giving back then was probably like I don't know, I might have shot like 50, 60, 70, maybe even sometimes 100 photos, and I would literally give the client all of the photos like, here you go, those are your photos. I wasn't doing any retouching on the skin, I wasn't doing any color correcting in Lightroom or Photoshop, I wasn't doing any of that stuff back in the day. I would shoot and I would give the client a DVD or a CD with everything they needed on there, which was the photos from the photo shoot. So yeah, I probably was charging people like $30 but I was trying to shoot a million of them a week. So at that point in time, it was like really good for me because for beginning photographers, I feel like quantity or shooting for quantity is good because number one is practice. And the only way that you get better at something is to practice it more and then more and then more on top of more. That's the only way you're gonna get better. So, you know, if you're coming out the gate and you're like, oh, I need to be charging a few hundred dollars and I'm only gonna do this and I'm only gonna do that, only gonna do this. You already like, tripping yourself up because in your mind you're already feeling like you got to be on a certain level and you're not focusing on trying to learn your equipment trying to learn you know how uh the sun uh reflects off of skin tones or reflects off of, or reflects off of certain colors of buildings and stones and and all of that stuff like that's the stuff that you need to trip over at your beginning stages because that's what makes you better because after you run into that wall the first time, you're like, oh man, I don't need to go that way again. Let's try this way. Oh, it's a wall over here, cool. Let's try this way. Oh, that's not working, let's back up some and do this. Like, shoot for quantity, you know, and, and that's what worked for me. So maybe it might not work for you, but at the beginning, guys, it wasn't a clear motive for me on like, oh, I need to do this type of client, I need to do this. I was shooting filling a void for clients that I was doing PR for at the time. They needed photos and a photographer. It was a void. People had checks to cut. I said, cut them to Sean. So I was shooting as many photo shoots as possible. So at the beginning, guys, just jump in there, get your feet wet and try to do as many as you can because it helps you so much at the beginning to trip over so many different hurdles and understand stuff after you trip over it. But you got to get out there and do it, okay? But this is the part where stuff got a little bit different on my side because I said if I'm starting at $30 photo shoots and I'm gonna make money off of this and not gonna go get a job, um, I can't do $30 photo shoots for a whole year. But I also told myself that if I'm not gonna do $30 photo shoots anymore, whatever my photos look like right now at $30, I'm gonna increase to $50, but these $50 photos can't look like these $30 photos. You get what I'm saying? So I had to not only increase my fee, but I had to increase the practice that I was putting in. I had to start learning Photoshop as far as retouching skin. And I had to spend days, weeks, hours, and months, and I mean, a few years of finding a certain strategic way to retouch skin and to uh, color correct and color adjust 
images and stuff like that. All of that stuff took time. But I also knew that if I was gonna go from this $30 to $50, we gotta do something a little bit different. That was what I started doing. Put more work in with Photoshop. Later on, got introduced to Lightroom. Later on, got introduced to stuff like Capture One for the studio. Like all of this stuff starts to line up as you go along. But if you're here and you're worried about something that's way down here, but you're trying to skip over all of this, I can tell you right now, it's not gonna work for you. Start here and then work your way up, you know, the ladder. And at that time, you can also work your way up dollar amounts. So, Sean, how did you go from 30 to $50? I gave myself like a deadline. I said, okay, cool. For six months, we're gonna charge $30. At the end of the six months, no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening, we gotta go up to the $50. Once again, y'all, this is what worked for me. When I got to the $50, okay, cool. How do we go from 50 to $75? Okay, cool, let's do $50 for the next whatever, six months, eight months, 10 months, a year, whatever you wanna do, but you, give, you gotta give yourself some type of deadline and some type of leeway to not only get better at photography, but get different types of clients. You know, because I mean, I can honestly tell you like the $30 photo shoot clients, they're not the people that will pay $400 for a photo shoot. Nothing against either one, but that's not the same type of clientele at all. Okay. So it takes some time to kind of build up to that stuff. So once again, $30 was like whatever, five, six months, $50. Got there for five, six months. Then I was like, okay, cool. Let's get a little bit higher. Let's get to $75. Let's get to $100. Let's get to $150. All of that stuff started to make sense once I started to build up things. But here's the thing though, guys, once you start increasing those prices, people look for stuff to be a certain type of quality. It's like somebody that's going to buy a Mercedes, you know, they know they're gonna spend that much money. They want that Mercedes to be super, super nice. And then if you're somebody that's going to buy like a budget friendly car, you start to be like, you know what? I mean, I ain't tripping if I got power windows. Oh, I ain't tripping it don't come with a key fob. You over here buying a Mercedes, you like it better come with power windows, it better come with a, with a key fob. And that's how the clients start to feel once they start looking at your work. Because it goes from being who's the dopest photographer and who has the biggest name. When they start cutting a check for stuff, guys, they looking at the quality, they looking at your customer service, they looking at your turnaround time, they looking at how you deliver stuff. All of that stuff is important to the client then because now what are they doing? They are cutting a the check, all right? So that's another thing away from either even touching the camera and editing on the computer that you gotta mentally prepare yourself for because it gets crazy. And it will get crazy if you don't keep up with everything that's going on, all right? So we just talked about increasing funds and how you can increase funds. Another little thing I tell y'all I did, but don't, all right, y'all gonna tell everybody anyway. <laughs> so I started doing like printing packages. So I would say, okay, cool, hey, for $50, you would get a photo shoot for an hour. Um, you'll get a thumb drive with 25 photos on it and you'll get 10 edited photos. It'll be whatever, five five by sevens and five, and five four by sixes. I used to go to the nearest store, whatever stores y'all could think of from Sam's to Walmart to Walgreens and I would spend the rest of the evening printing packages for clients. But it also created a way for you to try to charge a little bit more. Why? Not even because you're just printing, but because you're printing and you're taking more time to go do all of this other stuff because it costs money to do it. You gotta drive to the store. You gotta drive back home. Probably gotta eat that day. Like all of this stuff costs money and you gotta just mentally prepare yourself to be thinking about all of this stuff that's costing money. Because what happens on a lot of sides for you guys is you wanna get a cheaper price which is fine because you want to be competitive in your market. Totally get it. But this is the thing. If you try to be too competitive with your price by lowering it, it doesn't help you in the long run because you're going to go charge this $50 for an hour shoot and give these people all these photos back that you're going to edit. And what's going to happen on the back end is you're going to get tired, you're going to get exhausted, you're going to get burnt out, and you're going to be that photographer that's feeling like, man, the clients the clients be tripping, and, and man, the clients don't want to pay, and they want to do this. Correction. You let the clients trip. You let the clients not pay. You are the reason that you need to be mad. So if you that person out there right now that's mad and upset because clients don't want to pay you, you're just not figuring out what type of clients that you need to be dealing with. 
The people that want to pay $30, let them pay $30. If you don't want to get paid $30, then those aren't the clients that you want to promote and market to. Don't lose no sleep over it, guys, all right? So the next thing I want to touch on real quick is expenses. Expenses are expensive. I don't know if y'all peeped it yet, but cameras come out like every freaking week from all these companies. Any company you could think of, man, they dropping cameras left and right. And they're expensive. And what happens to you at home who on that mailing list? You see the camera pop up. Dang, man, that new Canon. Oh, man, but that new Nikon. Oh, DJI just dropped something else. Oh, Sony too. Pentax did last week. Man, you looking crazy. Because now you're trying to figure out, man, how do I keep that new stuff? And then your favorite photographer that you found, that you following, what they doing? They posting, hey, yeah, this new Sony so-and-so and so-and-so. <laughs> this is the new Nikon, da-da-da-da-da. It shoot a billion frames a second. And you at home tripping like, dang, man, you know, look, at my, look at my camera. Y'all stop feeling like that. Don't compare yourself to everybody else, number one. And number two, if you start to charge your clients, you will have money to invest back into your company as far as equipment go, as far as you needing to take trips, as far as you being able to put gas in your car when you go do these photo shoots. Guys, you gotta get to that point where you're gonna eventually charge people some type of money. And you gotta put all of this stuff in the same box, guys, and understand, okay, cool. If I'm gonna charge this person $150 for an hour, but I gotta drive an hour away, and it's $25 there, and it's $25 back. So your 150 is down to what now? $100. So you just made $100 an hour instead of $150 an hour, right? Oh, you stopped and got something from your favorite restaurant. It was $10. So now we're at $90, right? Okay, cool. How many edits you returning? Oh, you returning 35 edits. How long it take you to edit 35 pictures? Hmm? Let's just say nine hours. $90, nine hours. How much are you getting paid an hour? Ten dollars an hour. That's not a bad check though. But I can also say that it's gonna probably take you way longer than nine hours to edit all of those photos, especially if you're retouching skin. So guys, once again, I'm not telling you to go jump your prices up through the roof. No, that's not reasonable. That's not gonna make any sense to the people that you're working with. But you gotta figure out a way to create that happy balance. So. Charge that 150 and still use, okay, whatever, $50 was gas. But instead of 35 images, you might want to decrease it. It might say, hey, let's do 15 images if we're going to actually retouch them, retouch them. You know, because that takes a lot of time. And then what starts to happen is all of the time that you're putting into retouching, you can't shoot another client because you're retouching. So that time that you're retouching, that's no time to make no new money. That's no time to figure out new skills. That's no time to do any new conference calls with potential clients. That's no time to make a design to do any marketing and strategizing and for advertising. That's no time for nothing else during that time that you're editing. So you gotta keep that in mind too, all right? So think about the numbers that you're putting out there to charge these clients and um, just make sure they make sense for you. Whatever number that you come up with in your mind, on your side, be reasonable. Be reasonable as far as you go with your craft and the quality of the product that you're putting out there. Because people will always have a problem no matter what your fee is. If you charge $30 and give back 200 pictures, they'll be like, why, why isn't it 300 pictures that you're returning? And why you don't do prints? And why you don't do this? They're gonna have something to complain about regardless. When you get to charging $500 for a studio photo shoot for two images, they're gonna want 2,000 edits. It's always gonna be a reason behind somebody having a complaint to do about something. So be reasonable as far as whatever you have going on on your side, okay guys? Last little tidbit and I'ma get up out of here, man. Make sure y'all putting the work in and the time in and the effort forth to get that quality to the level that you want to get paid. Because a lot of people wanna get paid these big prices, but the work and your customer service and stuff don't line up with that. I can honestly tell y'all that a lot of my clients that I end up working with, they don't work with me because they feel like I'm the best photographer or the best cinematographer. They know it's a full experience when they come rock with Sean. We're gonna talk, we're we gonna pretty much become best friends. I'm gonna help them choose our clothes. We're gonna set up the time schedule for their venue and stuff like that. Everything that I need them to have in order for my photos and my film to look better, I wanna work on that stuff. Because when I go to that next client, I wanna say, hey, oh, you want that look that so-and-so got? Yeah, well, so-and-so paid $3,500 for that video. You know, but it takes time to get all of that stuff like that, guys. And you gotta work on that. 
So I want y'all to work on that and um, just figure out ways to kind of get your rates together and might want to make it like a whole board to say, okay, hey, I'm charging 50 now, six months, I'm gonna charge 100, six more months, I'm gonna charge 125, three months after that, I'm gonna charge 150. 150 is my goal to get to for a photo shoot. And then itemize how you want the shoot to go. This is how many deliverables are gonna be in the shoot. This is what I'm gonna do as far as retouching or it won't be any retouching or it won't include prints. Oh, make sure y'all put everything in y'all contracts or in your or on the invoices because as soon as it's not there, they're gonna say, oh, you didn't say I couldn't do this one thing. All right, so be careful out there, y'all. This will be a topic we could talk about forever, but I, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it to a close. I hope this helps somebody out there. Keep shooting, keep practicing, be reasonable, stay positive, and as always, good luck. <laughs> I'm getting up out of here, man. Before I do, hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the show. If you like the show and it helped you out a little bit, give me a thumbs up, man. If you want to get in touch with me, my website, www.pixandflix.com. My email, pixandflix at gmail.com. I try to reply to all the comments below, so make sure you go ahead and comment. And um, I don't know, man. I think that's it. I got to go, y'all. <laughs> y'all be easy, man. I'm gone.